First thing I want to do is welcome everyone that's attending today. Um, thank you for taking time. Um, as you can see, Patrick's there with us uh, today, so we're happy to, um, to have him on board to help do this, this particular session. Um, you know, it take, we like to put these efforts in and get these training sessions for you, and we really hope you're, you're getting some use, use out of them. Um, today's one is going to be a two-parter. Um, we're going to mostly focus on two things in here, mostly related to users and memberships of users. Some things have changed in issue track. We wanted to give you some information. So um, let's go ahead and let's take a look. So here we go today. Um, and of course, just to kind of cover the basics, the overview sessions are designed to help to help our existing customer base, you know, learn more about issue track, provide refresher training, and to learn more about the product. Um, it doesn't have to be sysadmins, um, but it's nice to have them involved. Um, we are planning on holding them on the second Thursday of every month at 1 p.m. And of course, they're available on recording after the session so that you don't miss anything. So if you can't make the session or you can't attend the whole time, we are recording it and it will be available for you. There's a good library of them built up now since we've been doing this almost two years. So um, we hope that you can stay with us for the entire session, but we understand things happen. So please do the be best you can. Um, of course, we want to also state that the time sessions on these are going to vary. Um, as we're moving forward, we're playing with how long sessions need to be. We're going to try to keep these to about an hour in the future. Right now, they run about 90 minutes, but we want to see if we can do a little bit shorter on the future so that we can be more aware of the time frame for you. We may do one session, we may do two. So we're playing a little bit about, about that. Um, one of the things that would be nice is we do send surveys after this. And if you have any comments about you know, the length of the time, the information that we're providing, use those surveys to give us some information back. We're looking at how we're gonna modify and change this process going into 2022. And uh, it'd be nice to get some, some good feedback from you. I'm looking at the attendees today. I've got some really cus some customers I've dealt with for many years, and I really would appreciate you know, some, some comments from you on what we can do to improve this, to make this more and more your process. That's what we'd like to do. Other thing is during this session, um, please post any questions or answer to either to the question and answer section. Um, it's nice to, um, to go into the chat, but we like to record them in the question and answers because we can record that information in case it's something we did not respond to during the session. Patrick's going to be monitoring during the first session where I am going to be doing and I'll be monitoring during the second session. And we'll break in and respond to the questions during, during the sessions as we feel appropriate. Um, so what are we doing today? The first session that I'll be doing today um, is going to be on user membership and issue track and it's the changes from the version release of 14.2. We've made some changes to how we um, allow users to access information versus on the organizations and I want to kind of go over that today. And then Patrick's going to follow up with the second session. He's going to give you some best practices on user and group management. Uh, of course, he comes from a different perspective since uh, Paul and I over the years have been doing it from the PS perspective. Now he's bringing in a newer newer and fresh attitude coming over from support. So hopefully he'll turn, talk to some of the points about that. And then after we get through, we will be hoping that the, um, the, the floor up essentially for any question and that you want to ask us and we'll do our best to respond. So if there's anything that you want to bring to the table, be, feel free to, to respond to us in the question and answers. So, um, so who is here, of course, my name is Mike Wright. Uh, I've been here for a long time. So as you can see, and if you've attended many of these, I've been in most every webinar that we have had. I've only missed a couple. Um, but uh, of course, uh, I've been here as long as the company's been around um, and managed different things. So if you hopefully you're familiar with me, if you've worked with me and see many people on this list, I have talked to many times over the years. And then there's Patrick Truscretti. He's a support analyst now. He's moved over to the professional services team. Many of you have worked with him over the years on the support team. So um, he's now helping us out on the PS team. So uh, we're welcoming him here. And now he's joining this effort on the webinars too. And then I want to point this out also. Um, many times you want to connect with other users. This is a great portal on our LinkedIn page to go to the issue track user network. It's where um, we have 
other users can you know post things there so you yourselves as consumers of issue track and you want to connect with other people that have um who are working with issue track use our user network in order to do that um sarah is, is monitoring that she's posting that there's a lot of good information there of course um, we do have social media platforms on Facebook and LinkedIn and Pinterest and all these other stuff. So um, they're happy to help you out in, in any platform that you want to connect with us. So today, let's go ahead and get out of this. And I'm going to kind of drop, dive right on in and we'll get this thing started here. The first thing I wanted to do is kind of go over some of the release notes that are in here. And this is kind of a strange place to start a webinar, but I thought it was appropriate for this session because there are changes that are specific to organizations within issue track for this particular version. It has some interesting features that I want to point out to you, and it has some interesting capabilities as well as, you know, it's everything else is it's a change. I mean, anytime you're dealing with a change, it's always, oh my God, what happened now? Just like we had a call this morning on the support team that Julian answered and it says, you know, you changed something. Oh my Lord, what in the world? Why did you change this? Well, as you know, issue track has changed throughout its whole life. We've tried to make the product better. We do our best in writing its cleanest code as possible, and we make changes. Well, every once in a while, when we make a change, something happens, and we've come up with a new release and um, there's so a challenge to the code and we'll have to go ahead and make the change. And of course, we're very responsive for that and always out there. So 14.2 is out now. It's the newest release of issue track. We're going to talk specifically about that and what some of the changes mean to you. And that's where I'm really starting in today. Um, there is a change in the relationship between the users and the organizations. Um, organizations have been a main part of all of our structures within issue track over the years. Um, whether it happens to be from the issue perspective or from the user perspective. Issues belong to organizations, users belong to organizations. So a lot of our visibility control was from the membership of a user in an organization and what they were allowed to see, of course, related to their permissions. Well, we've had some capabilities over the years, our allowed orgs specifically, to allow the members of one organization to see the issues of another organization. Well, as time has gone by, that's pretty broad. Essentially, it's allowing a group of users to see all the issues of another group of users without regard to who they are, what they are. You belong to the organization, you get things. So um, we've begun, we started today with the 14.2, and we're now creating this organization membership to replace this allowed organizations. It's allowing things to go from essentially the organization perspective to the user perspective, so that a user can belong to more than one organization. And when they belong to more than one organization, you have one as a primary that is going to be exactly what you are today. And then you'll have additional memberships in other organizations that can allow you to see the issues or see the users and the issues related to that other organization. And as I'm going to show you, there's a little bit more as far as permissions are concerned about what they can do with those issues. So we can even do some read only in here when you're trying to look at this, which is one thing that many of you as customers have looked for in the past to allow a read only view of the issue to not even allow them to add notes. So I'm going to go over some of those things that are adding and that are added capabilities in here and show you some of the the, the visibility issues that you can use and how you use that, of course, is always is always is up to you. Um, well, Patrick and I will be happy to sit here or the support team would be happy to help you out. This is a big change. Um, it is some things that are that you've got to really plan out in order to to get things correct. So um, we're here to help you out. So you could have absolutely no impact upon your site because you only use one organization. You know, okay, so big deal. So I changed something. All right. So it may not help you, it may not hurt you or help or hurt you today, but it could be something you could use in the future if you needed to. Um, I think there's some cool features in here. This is still fairly new. We're still playing with this a little bit in order to get this to figure out exactly how we can use this to our, our best advantage. So um, we're going to be working with this over time and we'll give you more updates on this feature as it comes goes along. But here's a brief list of the changes that you can see here. So 
Implementation of multiple organization memberships replaces the functionality allowed organizations. The idea behind the allowed organizations in the, in when we first created it was essentially like a parent organization and its subsidiaries. A parent organization needed to be able to see all the issues submitted under the subsidiaries, or it could be multiple companies that are related and have multiple sites sometimes and we, in our system, we create a separate organization for that, but really they're the same organization. The users in one organization needs to see the issues of another. Well, in order to do that in the past, you had to create two separate users. And we have in certain situations where customers have created multiple users to allow their users to see issues in other organizations because they needed control. They needed to be able to edit those issues. They needed to be the email distribution list didn't work. We needed to have more control. This release is going to allow that to occur. So again, I'm going to show you how that how that's done in a little bit. So now you're getting a big change in capability because we're now looking at things from a user perspective. So now it's user by user gets access, not by org organization. So it's a little bit different here. Um, and so it's going to be something that will be interesting. So users and groups can now have multiple organization memberships. You've added more visibility control with the users and the issues. Um, and then we've even um, updated the API with the, to, relate, to be able to use this new capability. And Report Writer has a users and organization memberships data set to help you manage this. So let's kind of, I'm going to go into the site and I'm going to just point out a few things that's new. Um, I'm logged in under my demo site and then I logged in as me. And what I want to do is I want to show you in the user profile first. So I'm going to go to the users page. The first thing that I want to show you is when you go to add, and you're just doing a manual add. So we're not talking about Active Directory. We're not talking about any of the identity management capabilities. We're just talking about a manually added user. Everything looks the same until you get to select organizations. So in the past, this has been a drop down or select box. Now you pop open a form. And the available organizations will show on the left hand side. Now, some customers have thousands, literally thousands of organizations. So if you need to filter the list, you can search and filter the list. And then if you're, let's say you have a thousand organizations. And what happens is if you like sort and you just put in, you know, ICL, and ICL is in a hundred organization names. It will show the first values in here, but the behind the scenes, you're going to see the entire 100 list available here. Then what we'll do is instead of you having to go through and drag and drop each one of these, you can click add visible. It'll add not only the ones that you see here, but any other item, other organizations that were also collected within that search. So if you happen to have, say, ICL and it's 100 items and you only see 20 here, we're still going to bring over all 100. So the next time you search, of course, then they wouldn't show up. The other thing that's going to show up on the other side is these icons. And these icons are very important. First, the little star is your primary organization. Just like today, you have a primary organization that in our corp site, mine's issue track. Okay, so Patrick and I both belong to a primary organization called Issue Track. So that's the start one. In this particular case, I'm also going to add a membership in finance, HR, Issue Track, IT, and so I'm going to make Issue Track my org. So that's how quick it is to change one primary to another. And you see down here, the user's primary organization is Issue Track. Well, now I'm also allowed now to view the issues and to see facilities, finance, HR, IT, and webinar. And then I can set here, because this permission is allowing the edit to work. That means that I can go in, if I have edit permission, I can then, if I can access and see the issue, then I can edit and change that issue. If I remove it, it's read only now, because I don't have access to make those editing changes. So many times with email distribution list access, you still have access to add a note. Even that's removed on these. 
So you don't even have the ability to add a note. You have don't have the ability to add it, even though you have the permissions to do so. We've removed it at the membership level. The other thing is, is you come back in here and you can see also the users. You can allow the users to be seen. Why? You may need to submit an issue or task an issue to a member, to a user that's in a member organization. So you want to see those users. If you happen to have the agent permissions, then you may want to be able to submit an issue on behalf of another organization's users. So if you have the permissions, then you would be allowed to do so. If you did not have that little icon there, then you would not be able to see the users in that organization. So what I'm saying to you is this membership there is very powerful because it can go ahead and give you capabilities to submit an issue on behalf of a secondary organization. Example, perfect example in here. I happen to be a salesperson. And a salesperson, then I have a primary membership in my issue track organization. But I have responsibilities for the organization's HR, finance, facilities, IT, and webinar. They're my customers and my support site. This will allow me to submit an issue in my name for these particular organizations. So if you happen to be using things like um, organizations as store numbers, for example, then if you have stores in there that are set up as individual organizations, it means that a salesperson then could go ahead and submit the issue underneath their own name for a particular store. Many times today, we have to create a dummy user record in order to do that for that particular store. That may eliminate that. It may not. It just depends on the, the particular situation that you're in. But this becomes a very powerful tool now for you to use to access additional issues. And then all you have to do is hit update, and then it shows as a list of issue track and five others. So you just pop it back open and you can see. And then, of course, you can add, remove items as you need to. That's probably one of the biggest change. That's one of the biggest changes we've made in a while in the issue track system. So just to update and get rid of that. The rest of the, the particular form here is pretty much the same. Nothing really else has changed in here. Um, so let's go in here and I want to take a look at the list and I want to do um, so you'll see the list is in here. Nothing has changed in here. The department organizations, everything looks the same in that particular case. So I'm going to go to new issue and I'm going to actually log out. So I want to show you a little bit different here. I want to go back to this. Let's go to the hub. So I'm bouncing around. I'm going to look at the open issues in here and you'll see, of course, that because I'm listed as a system administrator here, I'm seeing things from facilities and IT and HR. I'm seeing them from all over, which is what I'm supposed to do. Well, I have a user in here and his name is Mike. So I'm going to go to my user, Mike. And user Mike, I'm going to log in as him. He belongs now to an organization called IT and he belongs to four others. So we're going to remove issue track as a membership. So facilities, finance, HR, and IT. He has no rights to make any, any, to make any edits, nor can he see the users, but he should be able to see the issues. I do an update. And I'm going to log out. I'm going to give it a moment to finish the update, just to make sure. I always like to hit that button. I'm going to log out, and I'm going to log back in as Mike. I can type correctly today. Different keyboard. Take a look right here. I'm now in the open issues tab underneath issue hub. And right away, I can see facilities, IT, HR issues. If I go to some new issue, I don't have the ability to change the caller name. It's going to submit underneath my user profile. I am an end user without the permission can submit for others. I can then go in here and change this over. So now this is a 
finance organization issue, not an IT organization issue. I can go in here and say it's an IT. I can do it whatever one I want, as long as I have a membership. And the filtering should occur, should work correctly in here. So if you select HR, it should give you HR. SL1 and SL2 are not related to any organization. So as soon as you change these, the filtering will work. Finances, AR and AP plus LCL1. So the location information then in this particular case will filter according to the organizations that's set up in here. So that gives you that ability to submit on behalf of a member organization if you need to. You're still submitting under your name though. It's not giving you can submit for others because you're not submitting on behalf of another user. So where many of the cases I've run into these days, and Patrick and I both have set up sites this way, where we go in and we set it up so that you submit the issue and then you do an edit in order to change the organization. Now, if you have a membership in that organization, you can just go ahead and change the organization on submit, which that can be a very big piece for us. So it gives you that, that capability of doing that. Um, this is a big change, um, of course, if I go back in and just for the heck of it, I'm gonna go and log out here. And I'm gonna go back in as my Mike Wright user. Type again. I'm gonna remove some, some abilities in here. So I just wanna change this person's, Mike's um, permissions here. So I'm gonna go back into users. I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna to go to my list. I'm going to edit my user. And then I'm going to go to the memberships. And I'm going to say, you know what? I don't want you to see facilities anymore. I don't want you to see the um, HR. Actually, we'll do IT and facilities and take finance away. We'll do an update now. Now, when I log back out, of course, now I'm going to always do my update just to make sure everything is updated properly. Do your log out. Log back in again from Mike. Facilities in IT. So just changing the membership changed what I could see. So it's giving me capabilities. And just so you can take a look at it, I'll look at this one here. Here's a facilities issue. Remember, I'm in the IT department. I have added and I have add note in this one because of my permissions. So does anyone have any questions about this change? It's a pretty nice capability, we, again, something we need to look into, some, see if it's something that you can use or um, use some of the things that I've thought, thought about is, is you notice the nomenclature of my organizations was more departmental or internally looking at individual teams, more so than looking at individual companies. Um, so that I think there's some capabilities of working with some team um, or some team visibility in here by using this functionality. Again, we've got to explore it a little bit more, but I think it's one of the things that we've normally done with the responsible department. We might be able to use this particular functionality to do, um, to, to make it a lot more, um, a lot easier for us to manage and a lot easier for us to control the different permissions because even some people won't have access without having that ability to make any changes or modifications. So um, let's see. Uh, Jessica asked a question in chat. She says if she have if um, we have three or uh, if the user has three organizations assigned to them. That means they could not see issues submitted for a fourth organization that they are not a member of. And that is correct. 
it's specific. It's just like in, when you're going in and you're doing any other anything else. If you don't have the right designated directly to your user, you can't see it. Now, the only exception to that would be the permissions of the user. If they happen to be can't administrate, read only admin, if they have those different permissions that grant them higher levels, it would not, if the memberships doesn't really affect that. So they're still gonna get the capability to see in the fork organization. So you've still got to take their permissions into, into account. The other thing is that um, in during some of the testing that I did in preparation for this, the, the can submit the can see issues submitted by others is going to become important too, because if you want to be able to see issues in other people's organizations, you're going to need that permission. Um, one of the things that I did in my demo as I started breaking out that permission into a single permission group, and Patrick will go over that and show it to you, but I created a group for can see issues submitted by others as well as can edit so that I could control exactly what users could have and have and not have specifically in that particular case, because it was so important to what they could see and do within those allowed memberships. So some of the things that Patrick will go over for you in just a minute. Anything else? And I hope that answered your question, Jessica. Okay. All right. In that case, what we're going to do is we're going to take just a short break and we're going to make this only about, instead of a five minute break, we're going to make this only about a two minute break. Just give you enough time to get up, get a cup of coffee real quick and come back. And then we're going to have Patrick stay because again, we're going to try to keep these a little shorter than we have in the past. Um, so I'm trying to, to be very aware of y'all's time today. So um, I appreciate your time. Again, if you have any other questions or questions come up, please respond back out to our support team or to Patrick, myself, we'd be happy to help you out um, with these particular questions related to this new feature and any other feature within IssueTrack. Um, I do encourage you to read the release notes with every release. Um, Travis does a great job of covering the different changes that are made in here and explaining them. And he also does a great job of doing of keeping up with the changes in the release notes affecting our Help Center articles. So um, please go ahead and use this. Um, some of the information that I did not cover was related to the Active Directory templates. I would encourage you to take a look at the release notes related to that. Uh, for those of you who do use Active Directory, there's not much of a change really going to be occurring, but it could be a concern to you. And if it is, I would go ahead and read those release notes and, and understand how the memberships um, will become over from a template, just like you would expect. If you clone a user with memberships, the memberships are going to come over too. So just be aware of that. Um, An incoming email also can be affected because it's anywhere you can create users will be affected. Okay, and with that, we'll go ahead and take about a two minute break and then we'll be off and running with Patrick. So y'all have a good day and I'll be still around for the rest of the webinar.